let's move over to uh, our next topic. And this is going to be our, our big topic of the evening. Um, we're talking NBA draft and NBA draft, big board 1.0. Um, obviously, you and I, we're both big NBA fans. Uh, I don't know about you, but personally, I don't watch a whole lot of college basketball, at least while the NBA season is going. But I really do love draft season. I almost love it more than like the playoffs. I don't know. There's something about it. There's something about that I love the NBA draft. I always take the day off work and, and pull a sickie um, and, and watch the draft. I don't know. There's something about these players getting picked to their teams. There's often some fun trades going on. So I love this time of year. I love getting stuck into the research and evaluating the prospects. But So we're going to go through our big board lottery. So just the top 14 picks. Um, I don't know about you, Cal, but I've broken mine up into tiers. Have you done? Have you done something similar? Uh, well, there's a clear tier one, and then and then after that, I've kind of just left it and just kept going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll break mine down into tiers. You can tell me if you disagree or not. We haven't spoken yet about our our um, sort of prospects and where we think they should be ranked. So we'll we'll be reacting organically. So. Uh, and if you have any questions or anything or anyone we left off, please hit us in the comments. Um, if you are keen on the NBA draft, we're going to be covering it all up and day, up until the actual draft day and beyond. So subscribe, give the video a like, and um, let's get started, Cal. Let's, let's get jump straight into it. Um, I think this number one is pretty easy. Who, who have you got at number one? You're going to give me a layup and let me have the number one pick? Yeah, yeah, you can have a layup. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to have to go with... Um... Jalen's no, I'm kidding. I'm gonna have to go. <laughs> Cade Cunningham, obviously. Yeah. Um. He, he's everyone's been talking about him for a long time now. He's yeah. meant to be, you know, the next next Luka Doncic or the next Ben Simmons with a jumper, which is a scary thought to be honest. Yeah. So. Yeah. Look, I feel like there's, there's a lot of hype. Um. He starts to prove himself. I'm always about people who prove himself in the actual league, but he, yeah. as a prospect, he's the clear number one. I, th I think he's the real deal. I'm, I'm super excited for Kate Cunningham. I, like I, I've got in my tier ranking system, I've got tier one, I've got one name and it's Kate Cunningham. He, he's, on, <laughs> he's in a tier on, of his own. I think no matter what team gets the number one pick, he's, he's the player they pick. He'll fit any team. He can play as the big point guard. He can play as a wing who does ball handling. Um, I think... And I'll, I'll do some, some player comparisons for each of these guys. I'm not the biggest fan of player comparisons um, in general, just because it can sometimes sound like you're either hyping them up or making them sound not as good. And there's usually some differences, but so my, my comparison would be a, a Luka Doncic um, with a bit more defense or scary, <laughs> which is scary. Probably not the scorer that Luka Doncic is. Uh, probably doesn't have the, the scoring uh, chops that he does. Um, and the other comparison is a Ben Simmons with a jump shot. But again, probably not as athletic, probably more of a Luka Doncic level of athleticism. Um, so those are two, those are the two comparisons, which either one, like that sounds just horrifying. Six foot eight, 220 pounds already. Just has it all. He's got the step back jumper. Yeah, just scary. Um, I think he's a, he's a future, in my opinion, just... His ceiling is obviously MVP level um, to me personally. Yeah, I can see that ceiling as well. I think um, he looks like an exceptional passer. Can run the offense, big enough to play defense, and like he is. It looks like he'll be a good three point shooter as well. He actually shot forty percent from three, oh. um, which is and the shots he was taking were not open, you know, kick out, standing still jump shots. He's hitting. Yeah. He's hitting tough shots. And then every team he was versing were obvious. They, they knew that, like, you know, he had a bit of a target on his back. So it was yep. the defense was homed around him and he, he still shot 40%. So that, that is promising. Um, I, I, just, I just love the passing. I think that's the main thing about this guy. He, he's got great vision with the height. And, yep. and that's why my, I think my playing comparison is like what you touched on is, is Luca, but not quite the scorer. So yeah. Yeah. I think Luca could be like, you know, one of the old timers. So I, I think yeah. Luca would be a better I, I'd get him as a better prospect, obviously. Um, uh, yeah, look, I can see that. I I think you can you can probably value Luca's scoring ability a bit more than um Cade's defensive scoring decent defensive ability. And obviously Cade hasn't done it on the NBA level yet. I'm projecting forward. Um, but I think he and Cade are gonna be the next, you know, LeBron KD. I think I think this is gonna be their league personally. 
uh, from what I've seen. Um, I'm a big, big, big fan of Kate Cunningham's. I think the team who drafts him has a chance of making the playoffs next year. Um, depending on the team, maybe not. Even if it's maybe Detroit? Not, yeah, maybe not Detroit <laughs> or OKC. We'll see. But um, but say Houston well, OKC's him, got Shea. They, yeah, they get someone at least. Yeah, if Al Horford plays the whole season. But yeah, probably, <laughs> probably not Detroit. <laughs> but there's, you know, if there's one of those bottom teams, like say Houston picks him, like that's a that's a pretty scary team, you know, with him and um, you know, some of their other Christian players. Wood. So yeah, yeah. I, I, they, they'd make some noise. They'd get close, I, I think. Um, let's move on to the next tier. There's probably not too much discussion to happen with Cade, but this is where I've got, I've got three names here um, in, in my next tier. Okay. I've got four names in my next tier, so I'm, I'm intrigued to see where you go. Interesting, interesting. Um, I'll, I'll name the three, and then I'll throw it up to you. You, you let me know your order, and then the, the other player that I've left off. Um, in, my, in my rankings, I've got at two, Evan Mobley, at three, Jalen Suggs, and at four, Jalen Green, um, in my next tier. Okay. Um, who, who have I left off, Cal, that you've got? And, and let me know if it's in a different order. Um, well, I, I threw in into that same tier was Jonathan Kaminga, ah, um, okay. the the, the good looking kind of was. wing, um, young looking wing with a lot of skill, a lot of a lot of, a lot of ceiling. But my order was a bit different, so okay. look, run through I yours again. Um, so I had Mobley, Evan Mobley, Jalen Suggs, and then Jalen Green, and I've been I've been personally I've been moving these three, probably the last two more so back and forward. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, with a different order. And, and that's why they're in the same tier for me. Um, I do think Kaminga's a bit further back in my opinion, but um, who, who, what's your order? I've got Jalen Green at the two. I, just, I love his game. Okay. Um, a bit of a combo guard. He's obviously a scorer. And yes. um, that's usually my favorite kind of player. So there's maybe a bit of bias there. It, it, no, <laughs> no, it sounds like a Callum kind of pick. <laughs> it does. It sounds exactly he, like a Callum kind of pick. He looks like a, you know, Bradley Beal kind of guy. Absolute yep. scorer, can do it all like... Obviously, not really a point guard scorer. Um, yeah, <laughs> super athletic. Um, really great fader. Uh, I yep. love his game. I reckon he looks great. So he's my my number two on my board. Okay, I then I don't have. Hate it. a... Look, he's in the same tier at least. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I don't hate it at all. I, 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 yeah, again, they're all pretty close to me. Who's your next? The, then I got uh, Jalen Suggs at the number three pick, which I think we okay. agreed on. Yes, I've got him at three. three. So ours, ours are basically just flipped. Yep, and then. Well, I actually have uh, Jonathan Kaminga at the four oh. and, and Evan Mobley, a bit of disrespect to him at the five. Really? Okay. He dropped down on my board. Gone. I'm sorry, but uh, is, look. Is that, is, that a, is that a center like phobia? Are you, are you just out on centers or it is, is it that, is that was my hesitation? I'm out on centers. I've decided if, of these prospects mm. at, who are in the same tier, I feel like the center should probably most times just fall to the bottom of that, of that list, right? He's a yeah, shot blocker. Okay. I'll give him that. He can play defense in the perimeter. He averaged like 2.9 blocks a game. Yeah, yeah maybe even three. Yeah. He's, um... Um, he, 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 he looks he, like, I mean, Wiseman probably looked like a better athlete coming out of the draft, but this guy's defensive IQ is definitely a lot better. And, uh, and I, would, your, I, would have to, I would have to disagree with that. I, I think this guy's a bit more of a, um, a better lateral athlete. I think, I think, Wiseman was a bit like a, he was a better sprinter, probably may have a bit more of a vertical jump, but in terms of where I think it actually counts in terms of lateral movement, defending out in the perimeter, um, I think Mobley's a much better prospect and, and his defensive sort of instincts are a bit more there, which is why I've got him there. My, my biggest hesitation is the fact that he's, he is a center and I don't like drafting centers. They're a dying breed. They, they are, but... But I think I think he's clearly got the highest upside of this group. Um, I, I don't think you can really How's deny that. I, I think you know my comp to him is is Anthony Davis light, um, and 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 another another throwback here. I don't know you you might not have seen many highlights. I haven't seen him play. Obviously, he's too too old for me. But a shorter, quicker Ralph Sampson is another one of my um, uh, comps. You know. Thin sort of guy likes to likes to shoot a little bit, shot blocker. Um, so those, those are my comps. But um, I can't get behind I can't get behind him being behind Kaminga personally. Um, we'll, we might touch on him a bit later, but I, I think the ceiling is better for Kaminga. That, that's that's what I'll say. Yeah. No. I, well, I don't know. See, I think it, of these group, I think Mobley's got the lower the the most bust potential. 
Um, yeah, I sound worried. He's, he's probably the highest bus potential, but I think he's also got the highest ceiling. And, and I'm more confident, I'm much more confident with him than Wiseman. You, you, you heard me last year, I was out on Wiseman. I was not a fan. I didn't, I didn't think he could defend. I didn't think he did anything particularly great. Yes, he was a good athlete, but um, I don't know. I, I was out on Wiseman, but I, I see it in this guy. He's got better ball handling ability, better passing instincts, seems to be a much smarter defender. Um, there's even a bit of shooting potential there. He, you know, he shot over, what did he shoot over 30, 31 and percent from three. Um, not, not the cleanest looking jump shot, but there's something to work with there. Um, but, but from, from this tier, I think that depending on the team who's drafting, I'm happy with it. You going with any of the three that I named, um, you know, say you're Detroit or oh, probably not Detroit. Let's say you're Houston. I think, I think you, sh- you probably shouldn't draft Mobley because you've got a Christian Wood there, for example. And I would be much happier if they drafted a Jalen Green or a Jalen Suggs. Um, would you, yeah, obviously you would agree with that. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. One of the comparisons to Mobley actually is Christian Wood. So, yeah, I mean, I guess Christian Wood can hit the three. You probably, I think he's a bit more mobile than Christian Wood and he's got better defensive instincts. I think he'd be an upgrade over Christian Wood. Um, Definitely but, got better defensive instincts, 100%. Yeah. Um, like he, he, he could be a game-changing kind of player on the defensive end, even if the offense doesn't come. So that's why I think his floor is... I don't think any of these guys will be really a bust, but I think his floor is is still there. As like, like bare minimum, he's going to be a good defensive center, I think, at, at bare minimum, which is, which is valuable in the NBA. Um, unlike what Wiseman has, which, you know, he can sort of be played off the played off the court because of his defensive liabilities. Um, so one question about, I'll ask you is yeah. um, why, do you, why do you have Suggs above Jalen Green? See, these are the two I've been wrestling and I could, I could swap these around. Um, I just think Suggs, <laughs> is a, I think Suggs is a safer pick. Um, I think he's just, he's got a higher floor and there's a world where Jalen Green is like a... Um, there's a world where Jalen Green's like an Andrew Wiggins type, a scorer, an empty kind of scorer. I, I can see that happening. He I'm also good doing it though. He looks good. He, doing he, it. Oh, it looks great. Uh, clearly, the most athletic person in the draft. You know, uh, my comparisons here are you know Zach Levine. Um, yeah, that, that's my kind of comparison as well. I think he that's the easy, that's the easy one to make, but it's the I think it's the most accurate. Um, you know, I'm not going to fight it. So. Yeah, I don't know. What, what do you, have you seen what, his fader? Like, his fader honestly reminds me a bit of. And this is why I put him so high. Is his fader is very, very hard to guard because he gets so yes. high, and it kind of reminds me a bit of because Michael Jordan obviously that was his that was his move, mm. the the unguardable <laughs> fader. I'm don't not saying this guy is like that, but like it, <laughs> it reminded me a little bit. I was like, oh, how do you def- how do you defend that that jumper? It's he makes wow. so much air. It's so lofty, high. lofty expectations <laughs> on the young guy. Jesus <laughs> Christ, Callum. <laughs> so that's why he's my number two. I, he, well, if, if anyone reminds me at all of Michael, then I, I'll, I'll have to give him the number two. <laughs> Jesus, okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I just, I don't think he's got the, I don't know if he's got the ball handling. Um, that, he's like, like a combo he'll, guard. He, he's got a bit of yeah, ball handling. Come on. He's got a little bit, but not enough to sort of like really separate himself and get the jump off. Um, that could definitely come. I think it's his big swing factor. Uh, I'm also, you know, defense. Yes, he's got the physical tools. He's long, obviously. Um, but the instinct, from what I've seen in terms of the scouting film and stuff like that, I haven't, uh, the wraps on him on defense is, has not been, not been too great. So we'll see. And, and what's, what's the G League, like what's this G League level at? Like how, how, what is it like compared to college? I mean, it's only just sort of recently been a new thing you know, players go to the G League instead of um, college. So, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're, I don't know, bigger bodies, I guess. And you've got some NBA athletes in there. Um, but, I don't know, is the coaching as good? Is the is the overall talent? And, I don't know. It's hard, it, hard it to It is gauge. a good question. But he was clearly the best athlete in the G League. Like, by oh, he's the best athlete like, in you, the you, draft. You, you watch him play and he was just, you know, levels above anyone else. Yeah. I think I think a common theme with me is athleticism. I, I bump down a little bit. I'm 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 not as keen on athleticism in general. I just think that like the, the MVP this year was fucking Nikola Jokic. Like look at him. 
He's an anomaly. He is a very special player. Look, He's seven look foot. Look at Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic. He's not an athlete. He is sneaky athletic. People underrate his athleticism. He's I'll say that. Wrong. He, you know, like you he know, drives Harden. by a lot of people. He just he, he's like a James Harden. He, he looks yeah. like James Harden a bit. But you can plays. get strong. You, you don't have to be explosive and and like a bunny. You know what I mean? Like which is what that's what Jalen Green is. He's he's a he's a springboard. So I'm I'm just I don't know. I I I'm taking into account. And obviously he's in the, my top four. But um, yeah. Talk to me about Jalen Suggs. We haven't touched on him. What what's what's your thoughts on him? Um, I just think he's really solid. He's a, he's probably the safest pick, yeah. I think, in the draft too. He'll be a good player for a long time. High IQ, you know, can run a team, just does everything really well. Yeah. Um his comparison. I don't know. I'm not too sure who to compare him with. He's like a solid kind of guard like him. I guess he can shoot it pretty well. So he's kind of like a uh, do, you, do you have a good comparison? I'm, I'm struggling yeah, to think of I've got, I've got two. I'll, I'll throw these ones, see if you like them. I've got a more athletic version of Chauncey Billups or Kyle Lowry. Is my, that's my kind of comparison. I think he's obviously more athletic than those two. And those are two, I think both of them are all-stars um, level he's players. He's 6'4 but, as well. So he's, he's bigger than a Kyle Lowry. Yeah, yeah he's, he's bigger than Kyle Lowry. You're definitely that Chauncey Billups kind of, kind of size. Yeah. Um, but just solid, smart. Can be a team leader, I believe. Everyone keeps going on back, to, going on about the fact that he played um, quarterback in high school or whatever. As if I don't know, I don't think that really means much. But he, he seems like a bit of a leader. Um, so yeah, I like like you said, I think he's just a safe pick. He's he's a nice, solid. He'll be, I think he'll be a borderline all star. Might get to an all star, a couple few all star games. Um, so I, I just think he's he's safe. Yeah, he, he's the and safest the, pick. And if the team needs a guard, then then obviously he's he's your pick. Yeah, uh, Br- Brendan Roy actually, I, I can actually see a bit of that in his game. Yeah, yeah. I like, can do a bit of everything. Doesn't jump at you with his athleticism, but still yeah. kind of good to boy by people. I think he's sneaky athletic. He's very physical. He he t- attacks the ring, attacks the ring, attacks he, the ring. Yeah, he um, does attack a lot, and he yeah. can he can get that first blow by, which is like all you really need. Yeah, but it doesn't right, screen at me there. Let's move on to, well, at least this is my next tier. I've got two players in this tier. Um, this first player is going to be, I'm, I'm putting my stamp down. This is my guy. This is the guy that I think that from all the other mock drafts, all the other big boards I've seen, um, this is the player that I think that I'm the highest on compared to everyone else. Um, and that is uh, Moses Moody at number five. And at number six, I've got your boy, uh, Jonathan Kaminga. Um, wow, can I'm, go, I'm, I'm, wow. I'm a little down. I'm a little down on. I guess you could say. I, I don't think he reaches the ceiling of those other guys. I don't know. I feel like there's there's he hasn't shown me as much. The, the, there's a lot of big wings, like good athletic defensive kind of glue guys that are being speculative in this draft. And other than obviously Jonathan Kaminga is one of them. Um, Moody's a bit of him, one of those kind of kind of prospects as well. I just think Kaminga's has got such a high ceiling. Like, yeah, I think he's an athlete. He can play defense, but he's also got a kind of good post game. Um, he he reminds me a bit of like the comparisons. Quiet. It's like he plays like Kawhi Lennox. He plays in the post. Oh, I don't think. Nah, I, I'm off on that. I don't know about that. No, no, nah, he's not. He's not the. He's not a, not a, as good a defender. I don't think as Kawhi. Not not close. Not the defender, but like the play style. Like offensively, I think his ceiling is obviously a very good defender. He's not gonna. He has the Be tools. He's got the physical tools, but yeah, yeah, I think it's a bit, bit early and a bit presumptuous to say Kawhi from the defensive side of things. No, he, like he's more, more the offensive game. Like he kind of picks yeah. his spots, knows where he likes it, and, and can hit a good mid ranger, as well as he's got the tools to become a very good defender. Yeah. So he's six eight. He's one of those players who you know he's got the body for it. He's already got a bit of a kind of mid mid range game. Um, he reminds me a bit of um, that that Chicago rookie um, this year. In terms of this kind of oh, Patrick upside. Williams, Patrick Williams, yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Um, I I see him again. I'm, I'm I guess I'm deducting athleticism points a little bit again. He's 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 a freak athlete. Like one of my comparisons here is like a shorter Blake Griffin, in terms of just you know coming out of college, Blake Griffin was just obviously a freak athlete. Um, had bounce, had had vertical jump, um, and again. Maybe, and, and this is what I was going to say, maybe this is why you're higher than him than I am, but another comp I have is like a, like an Aaron Gordon kind of type. You know, he's, he's a, you know, just an athlete, solid defensively, but hasn't really shown much. 
still very raw offensively. And so I guess you're projecting that to come along. Whereas I feel like I need to see more now for me to believe it, to put him into the top five. Um, and I don't know, I don't know. Is, is he a four? Is he a three? Like what is he in the NBA? I think, I think his best position would be a four personally. Positionless basketball, man. Come on. He can play. Yeah, both. Well, no, I know. I know. But like, <laughs> I don't know, like on a team, I think he's, I think he's, you know, your, your power forward sort of thing. He's a, yeah, I think that's his role personally. But which is um, fine. He's kind of got the weight for it as well. He's two twenty. I think he's only get it bigger. He's eighteen years old. So I think you're right. He's got the raw skills. Yeah. Um, has he hasn't quite proved himself? But I, the the signs are there, man. Okay. Let's let's talk about my guy um, Moses Moody, who I've got at five ahead of Kaminga. This is I'm, I'm playing my I'm playing my fact flag down. He reminds me of a Mikael Bridges sort of type with a bit of Chris Middleton is my other player comp. Um, he's a lanky six seven six eight, um, excellent three point shooter, great defender on the wing. He's your he's your at worst he's a three and D player in the NBA. Um, at worst, I think that he's got you know, like top ones or top two scoring ability. Um, shot 38% from three, 18 points, um, great free throw shooter. Has some sneaky playmaking ability as well. Um, I just I just think he's he's a very safe pick with with a fair chunk of upside in terms of scoring as well. But at, at worst, he's a, he's a plug and play, three and D player. And if you look at, this is what I was referring to before with the Phoenix Suns, these players are so versatile and will go on any team and they make a championship team because you want you want your, your Devin Booker or someone who's your primary scorer, and then the rest of your team you want three and D wings um, that complement and can play defense, stretch the floor, create a bit of their own shot, and then maybe you want to throw in a center in there that can move a little bit on defense. But I just think he's what every team is looking for if they want to build a championship team. So I'm very high on Moses Moody. I know he's usually a bit lower on some people's boards, but um, – I'm, I'm playing my flag here. I, I, I big believer. Yeah, I like his game. He's he's that kind of classic wing at this point in time. He's a good glue guy, I guess. Where, where do you have him? Where do you have him on your board? I had him at my number eight spot. Okay, fair so enough. I think he, that's I more pretty, where. Pretty yeah, I think that's more where he is. I, I've seen him as low as like like on the the ringer. I think he's at sixteen or something like that. I just think that that's crazy. I think. You know, there's players like who, who's ranked ahead of him. Like it was just crazy. Um, like got Corey the, the Aussie Josh Josh Giddy above him. <laughs> Corey Kispert's ranked ahead of him. Like you've got to be kidding me. Like I, I cannot get behind that at all. They've got Seng Yoon ranked above him. Franz Wagner. Yeah, um, I think he's he's ahead of all those players quite comfortably just because of his um, two way ability. So um, all aboard the Moses Moody train. Who who have you got at six? So my six was um, another kind of, uh, I, just, I just like his game, Keon Johnson. Um, okay. Good athlete. I feel like, he, well, I think that's the thing that screams at me, right? He, he, this man is an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's pretty raw currently. Yeah. Um, bit of a prospect, let, let's face it. But athlete, which I know that you love. We, you touched on it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, but, I think that's the theme of my, my big board. I, I'm down on athletes. You've got to show down on more. athletes. Yeah. I, I'm high on athletes. I'm, I'm okay. the complete opposite. I saw this guy. I saw his highlights. I'm like, this man is a freak. Yeah. He just needs it to click, and um, he should be a pretty good player. Great, so that's, great defender. His rap, he's got good raps as a defensive player as well. That, um, that's true. His on-ball defense and, and off-ball defense. I, I was watching some of his highlights, and he is he sticks to you like glue. So yeah. that right there can go into the NBA. He's 6'5", he's 6'6". Six, six, six. So he definitely can you know, kind of really kind of hand some guys on, on the perimeter um, as well as be big enough to guard your wings. So yeah. I think on that defensive end, he, he's already got a spot in the NBA, like right there. Um, but, and with his explosive athleticism, I like, if you get some kind of shot to go with it, like that, that's the full game, right? Inside, outside yeah. can dunk, you know, just a rim, rim runner defense. I'm okay. a fan. Okay. Uh, no, and I, I think that's where he's normally ranked. I think that's that's like the sort of spot that I see him pop up the most. Um, I'm I'm a bit down on Keon. <laughs> I, I will say this. <laughs> he is in my next tier. Like he's not far away. But in terms of my big board, I've got him ranked uh, 12th. Um, so 
a little oh, bit a little bit further back at the end of the lottery uh, <laughs> i just think i think you need to I need to see more than just good defender, good athlete. I don't know. Like he reminds me of like an Isaac Okoro or like a higher upside Andre Robertson, which sounds like a, like I'm throwing shade, but um, I don't know. I just, I need more. You, you've got to be able to create your own shot. You've got to at least be able, be able to hit an open three. He shot 31% from three point percentage and his shot does not, it doesn't look broken, but it, it, it doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence in terms of it's going to get there. Um, Sorry, I, I, sorry, I made it. I was reading the wrong one. Actually, twenty six percent from three, so even even worse than what I said before. Um, so that doesn't, I don't know, that doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. Defensive uh, specialist, it, it, it'll, it'll click. He's got years. I, I realize that I'm on the minority here, but I just, <laughs> I, I don't see. It. I think there's a lot of players in here that I think have a, a higher upside. I think he'll be a solid player, but I don't, I don't really see star potential when I see Keon, which may be not what you're drafting for at this point, but. I don't know. There's other players here that I'd like a little bit better, but I, I know I'm in the minority and I'll put my hand up to say that. Don't, don't really see it. Um, all right. Let's go through. I've got, this is where I'm, I'm starting to bunch up a lot of players. So I've got six players in this next tier. Um, we'll run through them a little bit quicker. Maybe we'll just touch on them a, a bit shorter now from here on. I've got at seven, again, another person that I'm pretty high on, probably higher on than most, Trey Mann. Um, at eight, I've got Scotty Barnes. At nine, I've got the Aussie, Josh Giddy. We'll talk, talk about him a little bit. <laughs> I've got Kai Jones at 10. Then I've got Jaden Springer at 11. And obviously Keon Johnson at 12 in the same, the one tier. So I think that they're, they're all pretty interchangeable there. Not, not much separating them. But um, what are your thoughts about any of those players stick out to you in, in your head? Um, I do like, like, I'm a fan of Scotty Barnes. He was my next pick. And I okay. kind of would have probably chucked him in the same tier yep. with um, with your Scotty or Scotty Barnes and Keon Johnson. I think they're pretty, yep. pretty similar. Scotty Barnes is a bit bigger, the being the 6'9". So I think he really has got, you know, that defensive upside once again. He's athletic. Mm -hmm. um, he can like, you know, he averaged four assists as well. So he, he can actually somewhat pass the ball. He, so, he I mean, basically played point guard in, in college from my understanding. I think he pretty much dribbled the ball out the court and, and, and was their de facto point guard. Um, well, yeah, so. four assists. He's obviously got the ball in his hand a fair bit. One yeah. and a half steals, half a block. Yeah. So I feel like all the signs kind of are there. You know, the point forward is obviously what everyone wants. Um, and then I think he's a defensive kind of specialist. So I, I like him. I like his upside. So he, he would be the next guy. He, he's got his yelling at me. As I said, he'd be in my same tier. I then think there's probably a bit of a, a drop off kind of after okay. that. Yeah. Um, I guess you could throw Moody in, in that category as well in that same tier, but that was pretty much eight. what yep. rounded out my, my six, seven, eight spot. Yep. Um, and, and then after that, I think that was probably, yeah, a bit more of a drop off. In yeah, my okay. I, I, I can see that. I can see that. I think, I think my point, um, again, going back to Keon Johnson and the Scotty Barnes comparison, they're both like defensive oriented players. I just like the size of Scotty Barnes a bit better and I like his playmaking ability. Both have horrible jump shots and Scotty Barnes' jump shot probably looks even further away than what Keon's looks like in terms of mechanics. But even, even if he doesn't develop that good of a jump shot, he still has a role in the NBA. Like a la, my comps are like Kyle Anderson or his ceiling. And I'm talking ceiling. He, I don't think he's going to get there, but his ceiling is Draymond Green-esque. Um, in terms of that defensive orientated, um, power forward swing guy that can switch and play small ball center, but also push it up the, the floor and, and, and play the role. But he needs to have the right team around him, I think, to get the most out of him. So uh, I'll sort of, yeah, see how we go there. What, what are your thoughts on, on my guy at number seven here, Trey Mann? Um, have, you, have you had much research into my guy Trey? I've not looked at any research. I'll do some now just for you. But if you want to, you want to take the I'll, lead. I'll take the lead. I'm a big, big raps on this man. And anyone who's, who's not familiar with Trey, man, um, look up some of his highlights because this guy, he, he is a shifty ball creator. He's a three-level scorer. And what I mean by that, he can score from three, score from the mid-range, get into the paint. He's a great free-throw shooter. Um, handles, um, a lot of people have been saying he's, my, my comp my comps to him is he's a taller Kemba light 
as in he's probably not got the handles that Kemba had when he came out of college, but the probably the best handle I've seen since Kemba. Um, and, and obviously, and another comparison would be a, a bit CJ McCullum-ish. He's going to come in and he's going to be scoring in the NBA. Um, there's a little bit of concerns about his defense, although I think he's six foot five. Um, so at the point guard, I think that he has the size to at least be passable on defense. Um, I don't think he's going to be like a Trey Young on the defensive end, end kind of thing. Um, some people also compare him to Shea Gillis Alexander, who he kind of represents and looks like physically, although I think Shea is probably a better, better defender than he is. So 40% from three, you know, I think as a 50, 58% true shooter, as a point guard, six foot five, um, I just think he's got all the tools um, to just hit the ground running in the league. Uh, so big fan of, big fan of Trey Mann. Um, so, but I, obviously it, the team would need a point guard, need some offense. He's not going to, I don't think he's ever going to be a plus defender. Um, but I just think with his offensive capabilities, that's enough to get yourself in this tier for me. Does he have like true point guard kind of skills or is he more the combo guard? He's probably, he's definitely a score first point guard, but I do think he has the ability to get those involved. Um, like he's not ever going to be a Chris Paul or anything like that, but he has the ability of like a, yeah, like, like I said, like a Kemba Walker kind of type is probably the best comparison in terms of play style, I can say, but he's six foot five. So that, that just hides the defensive sort of negative that someone like Kemba has. Um, but in terms of getting people involved, I'd say they're probably pretty, pretty similar. Um, so not horrible and pretty good, especially if you've got other playmakers on the team. I think it works really well. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about Josh Giddy, the Aussie. He was my next guy at nine. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit annoyed. We never went to see any Adelaide 36s. We, we should have, yeah, we should go in to see him play. I'm actually <laughs> yeah. a bit let down as well. Like we could have seen yeah. him with our own our eyes. We're, we're too late into the season, into, into draft season. But, um, what, what are your thoughts on, on Josh Giddy? He's obviously... Six foot eight, big point guard. Um, you know, I, I've seen I've seen both ends of the spectrum in terms of big boards out there. Um, bit of a wide gap between him. What What are your thoughts? I um, like he looks like a great passer, playmaker. That's that's what they're kind of pumping him up to be, right? Yeah, he looks um, amazing which, as a passer. He, he is. Look, he finds guys in the open space. He's legit, kind of like six eight. So he's he's got the skills. He does, I feel like the one comparison I'm, I'm giving him, which is not a positive one, because I'm not, I'm not completely sold on him. Um, I kind of have him more towards the, the later end of the lottery, maybe like a 14th, which a lot of other people have as well. Yeah, no, that's, um, I think that's fair. I think just because I don't really see the athleticism there. Yes, he can pass well and the IQ helps, but um, I, I kind of, this is what people were saying a bit about Denny Advia when he, when he came out of the draft, uh, this most recent draft. Yeah. And um, that Wizards team, honestly, it was really bad. I guess he's a, he's a rookie, but outside of Bradley Beal and, and Westbrook, everyone sucked. Um, and, and Denny, yeah, look, he won this starting position, but I feel like, I feel like th this guy just kind of reminds me a bit of, um, of a Denny Advia. So I, I'm not yeah. super high on him personally. Look, I, I think, I think it's a fair comparison, but I think he's, he's, I would say he's a much better passer. Um, I think he's another tier in terms of, um, creator in there i think i think he is legitimately you could compare him to alonzo or lamello ball in terms of his passing ability um and obviously the heights will, will garner those kind of comparisons as well but i don't think he's the scorer that uh, probably that um, lamello is i think i think his best comparison is alonzo ball or like a big ricky rubio if that but makes he's sense. not he's not quick enough to be compared to any of the ball boys come on like I'm looking yeah, at no, he, he's not, he, he is, he's lacking that athleticism and, and lateral quickness, which is probably his biggest weakness. Um, yeah, I'm reading um, Joe Ingles and Carl Anderson, which I actually don't hate. I don't hate. Yeah, I don't guys. mind Joe Ingles. Joe Ingles is a good, good comp. Um, you know, not, another not Aussie, athletic, uh, good passer. <laughs> yeah, um, but but Joe Ingles has probably got a better shot than he does, um, and probably not quite as talented as a passer. Um, so I don't know. Uh, he's he's a bit of a, a mystery to me. I, I wouldn't. Like I said, he's in this tier where he could probably go as low as 12th for me. Um, but in terms of star upside, if everything aligns, 
I, I think that there is there is some upside here. Um, okay. but when on your weakness chart you've got shooting and defense, I I, just, I'm, I can't give it to you. I'm sorry, I'm not super high on you. That's like, oh, what's his I weaknesses? Think, he can't shoot shooting, and he's not, can't play defense. Like the oh. shooting, the shooting I can see coming around. I think especially throughout the season he's gotten better. Um, I don't think the defense is ever going to be there personally. Um, I think that's always going to be a weakness. I, I agree. But, but I think the shooting can can not only be not a negative, it could maybe turn into a slight positive. Um, he needs to make the shot quicker. Um, he's got a slow shot, but I think he's getting more comfortable. He's one of the youngest in this draft, by the way. I think he might be the youngest in the draft. Um, so there's time and there's potential, but I do agree that he's a bit more of a project than anyone else we've sort of mentioned. Um, Let's, let's go on to my, uh, let's talk really quickly, uh, uh, my 10 and 11, Kai Jones and Jaden Springer. Did you have them in your top 10? Um, I did not, no. Who, who are your top, uh, your next two, by the way? I think, I know you, you said you so had. So I, I, um, I had Jalen Johnson at my number nine. Oh, yeah. Um, I then had, um, who you probably didn't have on your list. I, I just like him. Uh, Usman Garabu. Uh, Garaba, yes. Uz- sorry. Garuba, Garaba. I think is, yes. Um, I've got him a bit further down, but I, I do know it. Yeah. But play, plays for Real Madrid. This is an absolute hustler. Blocks yeah. a lot of shots. He reminds me a bit of Draymond Green um, without, I guess, the passing. But he's this really smart kind of guy, guy who I think could help a lot of teams. So yeah. obviously your, your small ball five is what he's made for. So Garaba, I'm, I'm kind of high on. Yeah. I, I, I see. I think you take away the, the passing from Draymond Green and, and what is he? I mean, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> Defensive I player of the year, man. Defensive I mean, player yeah, of the year. I, yeah, and I, I see that. I, I don't know if he's, that's a pretty big comparison to sort of give a, someone who's playing for Real Madrid uh, um, over there. But I, I do, some people really like this guy. I think he is, he's got the chops. I, I kind of see him more of a, just like a, a role player. Um, so I don't know if he's worthy of going in the lottery. I've got him just outside. Um, I see some Kenneth Fareed kind of vibes with him, just like that hustle player. But, you know, how much is that really? I don't know. I think, I think it's, the basketball IQ is a bit higher than... Uh, I would agree. I would agree. Probably some more passing instincts as well. And who yeah. was your other guy? Jalen Johnson. At Jalen Johnson. Just another wing, another prospect. Like the two-way, can play defense. He's got the tool. I think he's about 6'8". Yeah. Um, everyone, everyone wants a wing. So yeah. he, he's up there. The other next couple guys is Davian Mitchell, who's meant to be yeah. that kind of defensive specialist kind of guard, combo guard. Yeah. Um, offensively, not huge, but his three-point shot looks okay. So I, I can see a good, like a team that would fit him. He fits a, a certain build, obviously, but someone like a New Orleans when you've already got your point yeah. forward or, or, or even like a, a Mavericks when you've got Luca. He, yep. He's a feisty kind of guy that you could bring. And if he hits the open three, if he learns that, he could be quite useful in the NBA. And then um, another guy was um, Sengen, who was the, uh, who was yeah. the MVP of Turkey, um, 18 years yes. old. Got Albert a bit of a post game. Sengun or Sengun, I can't pronounce his well, name. but Whatever it is. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm probably butchering it as well. But he, MVP of the Turkey League is something. Big numbers. He did. He did. He's yeah. more of a post player. So I'm not yeah. too sure how it will relate, but he's got really good footwork. Yes, um, he does. And he's, he's a legit 6'10". Like, he's a big dude. He's probably fits for like the center role. In, in this NBA, yep. it, I'm not too sure where it will work, but I can see the potential there for him. Yeah. I don't, I don't model those picks. They're all there and abouts for me. I think the player that I'm highest on that you listed there was Davion Mitchell. He's obviously an older player. He's, what is he, a senior he in, in, in college? I think 22 or 23. So he's coming in older. There's a lot of questions around his jump shot. He, I think he struggled with his jump shot the first few years, but this year had a huge leap. Um, shot over 40 percent from three so whether or not that's legit i have my doubts his mechanics look fine he looks like he looks confident in the shot so perhaps he's just done a lot of work in there but maybe he's not a 40 percent shooter from three maybe he's more like a 35 36 percent shooter um so you know 40 percent is is you're a good shooter there so i don't know if that's going to be completely translatable but the defense is going to be there um Definitely someone who's got a spot in the NBA just for that alone. Um, I think he would go really well on a, on a Golden State Warriors, for example, if they can snag him with that pick 14. I think that would be excellent for them because um, he's someone who could contribute right away, defend players that you, know, you can hide, Steph Curry. Um, so I really like that for them. 
Um, one other, and, and I and I had Jalen Johnson also in my in my lottery at fourteen as well. So I had David Mitchell thirteen and Jalen Johnson fourteen to round out my my lottery there. Um, last ones that we haven't touched on, I want to circle back to Jaden Springer, uh, who you didn't mention. Um, I, I really like him as like a Davion Mitchell comparison, but maybe two or three years younger. Um, maybe with a little bit more upside. He reminds me of like a Marcus Smart almost in a way. Defensive, strong-bodied point guard slash shooting guard. Um, maybe with a little bit more offensive potential than Marcus Smart. Um, but I do do like him. I think he has potential to be a starting point guard in the NBA. Maybe like a Kyle Lowry. Yeah, like, like a Kyle Lowry. I think he's a bit bigger than Kyle Lowry again, but uh, and maybe not quite the offensive or shooting he, he shot a good percentage but on low attempts so I'm, I'm wondering what that's about maybe if you know a team can get in and see him in a shoot around and he actually is just bombing away from threes his stock actually would rise a bit so i'm a bit skeptical of the jump shot at this point but the mechanics look fine um and kai jones i'm actually uh, he's someone who has made his way up my board as i've been researching um a lot probably started close to like 20 or 18 but he's been coming in hot in my, my board. Looks like a bit of a, like a Christian Wood or like a, like a bigger, taller Siakam almost as like a ceiling. Just a hustle player. Loves, loves to drive to the rim. Has a bit of a handle for a 6'11 big guy. Came off the bench in college. So he's still pretty raw, but just the physical tools look really, really enticing um so he is a bit older too he is pretty raw but he's 20 years old so he's got like a couple of years on some of these guys yeah apparently he only picked up basketball at the age of 16 or something like that which whatever. i so always think is a bit of a red flag to be honest do you think it's a red flag i see i see it the other way i see it as a positive he's picking it up quick look i look i would say i think there's a reason that Giannis can't carry a team to a championship and there's a reason that someone like luca could so that, that man's been Fair playing enough. since he was three I'll Sometimes another, you need those kind of fun, those basic fundamentals from a young age. I'll throw, I'll throw another name at you though. Joel Embiid was a late, he was a late adopter of basketball. Um, someone who only picked yeah, up a game he's, at he, he is a specimen. He's like a legit 7'2", bigger than anyone. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. He, uh, and obviously um, he, the other guy that we're talking about, Kai Jones, is not, not that kind of a specimen, but he's got the physical tools. He is a very um, Six, explosive athlete. Yeah, and can yep. move laterally has a bit of a handle, showed a little bit of touch on the outside as well. So um, he's probably a high upside, maybe a little bit more of a, uh, a swing for the fences kind of pick, but, but someone I do do really like. All right, well, we might call it there. Any, any, anything else you want to touch on regarding the draft? We're going we're gonna to talk about this a bit more in the future though, when we um, know the order, but anything, any last words? About uh, this, I think there um, is a lot of good, good wings um, to be picked up in, in this lottery. So something to look out for. Usually it's a bit of hit and miss. So Maybe one of these guys could be the next Kawhi. You never know. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll see someone come through. Um, I, I think I think there's it's top heavy this draft. I like those that top four. I think you've got four players who um, you might say five, but I think there's four players that you can literally see, and legitimately see, be all stars from this this class, um, and then maybe one or two surprises that come through. So um, very top heavy draft. Um, and I'm excited. We, we find out the, um, the lottery in how long now? Maybe a week or so, two weeks, I think, from now. Um, so that's when we'll touch on this and we'll actually, actually have some mock drafts to go through. Um, this will actually be one of the best um, like lotteries to actually watch because there's so much running of, in this for a lot of teams. <laughs> lots of teams that have got a picks on the line. Uh, yeah, some it'll be a good one to lose watch. Picks, so, yeah, lots of fallout, lots and lots of fallout. I'm very excited to see where Golden State Warriors are if they get their second pick. Off the Timberwolves, that will be a big one. Um, I think is it is it Houston could lose it if it's outside the top three. A few different things happen there, so very exciting. All right, well we might call it there. If you love NBA and you love NBA draft, fantasy basketball, which we'll also do when the season starts to get closer, hit us up on Twitter at Ball Boys NBA. Like the video, subscribe, and we will catch you guys next time. See ya.